Hello my sweet ghosts, welcome back to my spooky crypt. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be doing a little time lapse, but it's going to be somewhat different because I'm basing it on a story. Usually, like I said in my video about how to turn emotions into art, I use lots of my own emotions and experiences when creating. But I also talked about empathy in storytelling and how you can put yourself into another character's shoes in order to create an experience through their lens. A great way to practice this is by looking at characters in movies or books or anywhere you can imagine. It can be really rewarding to take a step outside of yourself and try to convey what you believe are the emotions or experiences of others. Today we're going to be looking at a story that is extremely close to my heart. I've held on to this one for years. I actually used it as a final essay in an English exam about 10 years ago, so <laughs> I've had it with me for some time. So it's a very short story taken from this book of short stories called The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, who's a very old writer. She has this amazing way of conveying such atmosphere, especially in a gothic fairy tale type of way, which I am such a sucker for. All the stories in this book are sort of twisted versions of pieces of fairy tales that we all know and love, but she really switches them up in such a way that they're barely recognisable from where they're taken from, but it still gives you that little taste of those magical stories that we all know and love. Today the story I'll be looking at from this book is called The Lady of the House of Love, and this story is just it just lights up my imagination so much. So I'll try not to give too much away because I would highly recommend reading this book or uh, well, this story or any of the stories from this book because in its teeny mere 18 pages it conveys such darkness, such impact, such a deep sadness. So much raw emotion is poured into those pages and of course it's me, so there's big elements of horror in there as well. So the story follows a very lonely countess who's sort of holed up in her very old mansion for centuries, with only an old woman who's also mute to keep her company. So as you can imagine, she doesn't have anyone to talk to. All she has is this caged bird, a lark, that's locked away, and she sort of enjoys the fact that the lark calls out without any chance of escape. I think it reflects her own feelings about her own life. It's kind of the only thing she has around her she can relate to. As cruel as that sounds. The old woman is tasked with going out and collecting young men for her to feast on and satisfy her vampiric needs. But you soon come to realise she's so horrified and disgusted by what she has to do, but she's bound by this never-ending loop of having to satisfy the curse that she cannot get rid of. She is very weak and traumatised and slowly she's becoming as dilapidated and run down as this big glorious mansion is becoming crumbling down around her. It's so clear that this affliction haunts her so deeply on such a real level and she truly longs for humanity. You can really see that she would wish to be human but she knows that it's just always going to be out of reach. She actually has this kind of pseudo comfort in her tarot cards which she shuffles until they're worn to pieces and throws them down on her table each day to try and create some kind of future destiny, but even the cards consistently read nothing but death and destruction. This just further solidifies her belief and understanding that things can never change for her and that there isn't any escape from this day-to-day -day suffering and death that she has to inflict upon others. She's even described as the mistress of disintegration, which I think really encapsulates everything that Angela Carter is trying to put forward about this character. 
we really feel her torture and Angela Carter's language is so florid to the point that it's almost overwhelming there's so much description and it's almost smothering and it takes over every page but that just further sort of entraps us and encapsulates us in her world in that suffocated life of the Countess. That feeling of smothering and descriptive words about the Countess's obese lips being almost horrible to look at, despite her otherwise otherworldly beauty. The roses are described as being so sort of overripe, if you can describe a rose that way, so overly bloomed that they're just gushing out this smothering smell that fills every corner of the atmosphere around this mansion. The smells are described as pungent and intoxicating and beautiful but also too much. And I love the opposing imagery and forces that just come together to create the two sides of this story. I won't spoil what happens but one day her cards read a different fate that really surprises her, although it's still tinged very much with death, it's not a clear-cut vision of some happy ending. So as always, a young man is lured into the mansion, but you can already tell that it's somewhat different from the descriptions of what she has been through before. So seemingly this unending cycle of habitual killing and sort of identical day by day is broken into a new destiny, but you just have to read it to find out what happens. So today I really want to capture that atmosphere in this piece, I really want to capture the sorrow and the helplessness of the Countess, but also how each page is so thickly filled with imagery, so I want to spend time on making it quite intricate, making the surrounding areas of the subject intricate and having some easter eggs from what happens and the different elements that stand out to me. So this is going to have a lot of sadness, a little bit of horror, lots of details. I'm preparing myself for this now, I've got, got myself hooked into something that I hopefully won't regret, we'll see. So come along with me and I'll check in with you when I'm all finished. Hope you enjoy my time lapse.
my dear ghosts. Oh, that was a lot. You may have noticed I'm wearing different clothes if you're very observant, and yes, it is another day. Basically, I did record me making the piece right after the intro, but unfortunately that piece got a bit messed up. <laughs> so like I said, I really wanted to put lots of detail into the piece, but unfortunately right near the end I wanted to add like some little splatters of blood, so I decided to use paint for that. And I mixed the incorrect consistency, so the first droplet that went onto the page was so thick, so I tried to remove it, but unfortunately it just smeared and dried into a really thick paint, rather than these watery little droplets that would dry quite translucent. Then I thought, well I can just spread the paint out and make sort of a red wash over it and that could look cool. But by the time I had done that I realised that so much of the detail was lost and it no longer stood out and it was just red 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 and all these little intricate bits that I had drawn just got lost in a sea of blood. <laughs> so I remade the piece yesterday, the intro was two days ago, it's been a journey but I'm ready to share it with you now. And here is the finished piece as you have just seen in the time lapse which I hope you enjoyed. I wanted the piece to look quite opulent yet at the same time decayed and ragged so it's like the reality behind the veil of beauty and finery is both the mansion and the countess are breaking down the mansion physically and the countess both physically and emotionally. We have the beauty of the roses, but they're also smothering, like they're almost overtaking her, as you can see here, sort of pouring over the sleeve of her dress and creeping up over her hair. Then we have the stems and the vines, and they're shackling her arm and her neck. The red in this piece is very overwhelming, and it really takes the centre stage. And that was supposed to emulate the scent that is described so deeply in the story, how overbearing it is. I wanted the richness of the red to represent that, where I can't make the piece smell. <laughs> the dress is quite elegant, so in the story she's actually wearing her mother's wedding dress because she doesn't own any other dresses. Therefore I wanted to add lots of really pretty detail, like these little teardrop uh, pearls or gems that are hanging down and all the ruffles and these little uh, stippling details going down here and of course on the sleeves as well but at the same time I wanted to add that element of looming death and destruction so I created this skull sort of bleeding over her sleeve here, her puffy sleeve quite telling about her fateful death and destruction on the tarot cards that she pulls every day then over here we have her new card, symbolising the possibility of a new fate that befalls her in the story. And if you want to know whether it comes true or what happens surrounding it, you have to read the story. I really wanted her to be both sad and alluring because she's very seductive in the story because that's a learned behaviour, that's again the veil that she has over the reality in order to pull in her victims. You can see her pain uh, in the eyes and with her tears and, and at the same time she does look quite uh, sultry and she's trying, or I wanted her to look as though she's trying to draw the viewer in. Then we also have her obese lips as they're described in the story, um, almost as though they're fit bursting with the amount of voluptuousness that they have. And one of the characters is even described as being quite horrified by them because they're so striking, they're so overwhelming on her face, like lots of things in the story. And of course they're stained with blood to signify the hunger that she must satisfy. I also wanted to make the bones quite hidden and in a way uh, coiled back behind all of this striking imagery that's in the forefront because these are the parts of herself that she wants to hide, that she doesn't want to be true or real, and she does hide the evidence of her killings in the courtyard by burying them. These are her pieces of shame that she wants to hide away. 
and then we have again that facade of all the beauty with these huge overbloomed roses. All in all, I feel happy with the piece. I feel as though I got everything across that I wished to and that I endeavoured and set my intention on putting forward and I really hope that I did the story justice because I just love it so much. Once again, I highly recommend that you check out this book of short stories. There are so many gems in here and so many opportunities for inspiration. I am planning on making some more pieces inspired by different stories in this book. I also asked on Instagram if there were any other suggestions of things that you think I should watch or read or look at that you would enjoy me interpreting or being inspired by. So if you have any other ideas here on YouTube, leave me a comment. I would love to hear anything you have to say. Thank you for coming along with me on this rather tumultuous journey, but it was definitely worth it. I really enjoyed creating this piece and making this video for you guys. So I very much hope that you enjoyed it too. I'm wishing you very well in these strange times. Stay spooky and sweet and I'll see you next time. Bye!